This is uh, my Logitech G710 Plus. It is the one... <laughs> it's one of the Cherry MX Brown switches. They're actually very quiet. I love it. Anyway, um, I haven't cleaned this since I did IT work, which was about three years ago. As you can see, the grime is disgusting. And over here, I just quickly wipe down these keys so you can hopefully see a very definitive difference. But like, there's literally like a color difference in some of the keys. And then behind it, there's like tons of crap that fell between there, like crumbs and stuff from food and whatever. Uh, but otherwise, this thing is completely factory. I haven't done anything to it other than the wrist rest. I wrapped this in vinyl. Uh, so this is 3M vinyl and it's a uh, forged carbon fiber look. Wow, the sun just came out. Okay. Anyway, you can really see the vial now. I wanted to make this gray, that way it matches. Like, different colors of RGB and stuff. So depending on what profile I'm on, it'll always match. It's just white lights, neutral, but then you have this giant orange thing in the corner. So I figure if that's gray, it'll look a lot better. Uh, and then to accentuate the lights, so that way they're a little bit brighter. This little uh, black bezel all the way around comes off, and in behind it, I want to paint it white. So that way the LEDs actually light up more between the keys. So you can see a little bit better around this, rather than just the individual keycaps themselves. Now I get to uh, take every single key off. Great. <laughs> And this piece right here has these little clips that hold it in or whatever, but it's also plastic welded in with these little rivets that are melted over. So I'm actually going to have to cut all of these off just to get this stupid piece off. Terrible design. There we go. This I should probably clean first. So I got the orange thing. Just going to scuff it up real quick. Gotta make sure there's no shiny spots left, otherwise it won't adhere correctly, and it'll start flaking off. Once this is done, I have the keyboard all cleaned up, and all I gotta do is brush on some uh, self-etching primer, which has like an acid in it to adhere to metal, because it's a metal brace through the center of the keyboard, and the switches go in from the top, and then they're soldered onto the PCB below it. So I would have to unsolder every single switch in order to take that metal bracket off. And the metal bracket is what I want to paint white, so that way the lights shine through a little bit better. So, that means means that I have to put it on with a brush, and it's not going to be the end of the world or anything. And it's self-etching, so it'll adhere to the metal. Um, I wonder if I have some brake clean left. And that's it. Just kind of swing that around, dry it off. First, what I want to do is not get paint on the Audi. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to paint in this corner, and I'm going to spray that with adhesion promoter first. So essentially what this does is it's going to open the pores in the plastic and that's going to uh, kind of like soften it up on like a microscopic level so that way when I put the paint down it will adhere into the plastic kind of like primer. Now I would do primer but because these already have really tight tolerances just putting the paint on this alone is really going to suck so I'm going to be using uh, this paint here it's a rust paint it kind of has like an epoxy primer in it so again, adheres and then hardens, and it's enamel based. So it'll continue to harden over time. We just gotta be quick with it. So I'll just let that set up real quick while I shake this. Uh, it usually takes about five minutes. Oh my god, it smells like um, candy. That's terrible. That's gonna mess a lot of people up. Do one coat one way, give that about 10 minutes, do another coat the other way, 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna do both sides as like my third and fourth coat kind of thing or whatever. And hopefully that'll be enough that it'll have enough coverage on everything, but also not be so much that it's going to 
stop this from fitting back in properly. I don't know. I might have to do another coat because it did go on pretty thin, but I, I don't know. We're just kind of playing with it. We're going to see what happens. The only downfall of this being enamel paint is it takes forever to dry. Like it's tacky right now, so I can do another coat, but before this is actually dry and I can handle it, it's going to take hours, which is why I'm doing this now. So once the uh, back plate area is all painted and everything, I can do a second coat on that because it's just self etching primer. So it'll be dry in like 20 minutes. And then once that's done, it'll have been, you know, maybe about an hour or so. And hopefully I can handle this. That's about as good as that gets. I've already cleaned in between all the switches and everything. And like I mentioned, I can't take them off or anything. So I'm going to be using that white self-etching primer and a brush. And I'm just going to go through and do the entire thing. And then once it's dry, do a second coat, get a good even layer of matte white. So that way it kind of, uh, it'll shine out, but not be reflective. So it's not going to shine at me. It'll just glow a little bit more. It'll look slightly more pleasing. <laughs> Well, that's basically it. This looks awesome. This thing here is dry, but not cured. You can still feel on the side that it's kind of squishy. I guess I'll leave this until tomorrow. It can cure for the rest of the night, and then it'll go on. But I think that's going to clean it up pretty good. There we go, this thing right here. It's very subtle. Got like a nice ambient white glow going on. It's kind of neat. Then the gray, neutral tones, goes with anything. So I'm fairly content with this. Uh, my mouse broke again. Actually, I should probably clean that while I'm at it. Blue LED dies. Uh, this is my third one. And the blue dies every time because I always just have it on white. So, uh, you know, Logitech, you gotta make uh, better RGB LEDs for the mice because this sucks. I can't wait until this is dry so I can actually press that in. So that'll be for tomorrow. So let's uh, let's jump to that. That is the finished product. I think this came out fantastic. The white behind the keys couldn't have come out any better. The difference this makes is ridiculous by comparison. Normally you can barely even see light around the keys at all. You can only see through them. And it makes this really soft glow. Like it almost kind of looks blue, but it's not like an annoying blue. The computer's purple, so I mean, obviously, uh, the color isn't going to be super accurate on the camera, but I don't know. I think this looks fantastic. I absolutely love this. I was looking at new keyboards, and now I, I really don't want to buy a new one. Uh, start to finish, it took about six hours. If you're thinking of doing something like this, it does take a really long time, but that was mostly cleaning the keys and everything. If you clean your keyboard regularly, then this won't be an issue for you. Uh, but like I said, I haven't cleaned this keyboard in probably three years. It was more than due time for that. I actually just remembered that I still have the old keyboard from the garage computer, and both of these are the identical keyboard. So this is what it looks like stock. Well, I mean, this one's very dirty because it was used in the garage, so it makes sense. It's kind of hard to tell the difference between the keys. This is mostly reflecting off of all of the dust that's in there for the light. Then you look at this one, and it's super, super bright white around all the keys. Whereas this one is just reflecting off the dust. Like when you're down at like a normal angle where you're going to be looking at it, this one looks much nicer. 
Just for funsies here, I actually cleaned around these keys and put them back in just so you can kind of see, you can barely see the light reflecting around them because over here, you can see it more because of all the dust around the keys that the light is actually reflecting off of the dust particles from it sitting in the garage, like right over here. Like it's, it's super, super dusty. Like this is all like metal shavings, uh, but over here, where I cleaned, if we look at the comparison over here, it's way brighter. That's the difference of the matte black metal kind of absorbing the light versus the matte white absorbing it and dispersing it through the paint particles. So that was basically what I was trying to get at here because newer keyboards that have the whole back, that glow, they actually have like a white piece of acrylic, frosted white. So that acts for the light to go through and then light up the whole thing because it kind of glows through the whole thing. And you can see that it worked out perfect just using matte white paint versus here where it only lights up the front. Now it is a little bit distracting, but I kind of like it and it's just white. So it's not like super flashy RGB or whatever, but I think it came out pretty good. And then the orange along the side versus the gray. The orange just kind of looks really dated. Maybe it's just me because I've had these keyboards for three years, but this just feels like an old look. And then obviously the wrist rest, which I don't have on right now, is just regular black plastic. So side by side comparison of stock versus the modded one. It took about six hours. So if you're looking at doing something like this, uh, the outcome is definitely worth it. Especially for the price of keyboards now, the new version of the Logitech keyboard with mechanical keys is $300. And uh, this cost me a little bit of paint, which I already had. So technically this is completely free for me. If you were to buy the paint, so you're looking at about 10 bucks for the gray. And then the white was a special self etching primer. So that was actually $20. And I wouldn't recommend using a regular primer. You should probably use self etching just because we didn't sand or anything. So it needs to adhere to that metal back plate itself. So that's kind of a must for that. And there was the adhesion promoter that I used before the paint after scuffing. So that way it would kind of open the pores in the plastic so it would stick a lot better. And uh, that stuff is also $10. So $40 start to finish if you were to be buying the supplies. So I mean for $40 instead of paying 300 for a new keyboard, I think it was definitely worth it. Give it a much more updated look and I absolutely love it. Oh right, and the vinyl. I bought a giant, giant roll of this. Because oh, I wanted to wrap all of the interior stuff in my Audis. Well now I'm selling the Audis, so I just have tons of it left over <laughs> that I never ended up using because I didn't end up wrapping anything. Uh, but but that stuff was expensive, but I bought a lot of it, so it ended up costing $200 for the wrap. But I mean, this little strip right here probably isn't even like a dollar's worth. Like for a piece that small, you could probably even go to like a vinyl shop or something and see if they have like a cutoff that they could just give you. Because realistically, I could have did this with like a scrap piece. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this. I definitely had a fun time. So like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't like it. That's cool. Subscribe if you haven't, that helps out a lot. You can join the members program if you want, that helps out, support the channel, or don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.